Hi everybody, so today's topic is going to be on combinations and permutations, but before we get into those, we actually have to know what a factorial is. So a factorial is the product of natural numbers from n all the way down to 1. So a product, meaning we're going to be multiplying numbers. This is the fancy formula for it, but we can either do this by hand or using a calculator, and I'll show you both ways. And so an example of one is four factorial would be four times three times two times one. So you're always starting with whatever number is in front of that exclamation mark, and you're going all the way down to one and multiplying all those numbers. So in this case, we would get an answer of 24. Now, if we did seven factorial, that's seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, and that's gonna give us a nice number of 5,040. And so now, if you wanted to get a factorial using a graphing calculator, what you could do instead is type in your number, and then you're going to click the math button. It's on the left-hand side, right under the alpha button. Then go all the way to the right to PRB, which stands for probability. And then you're going to go down to the fourth option, which is the factorial symbol or the exclamation mark. And then you'll hit enter and then enter again to get a final answer. So now let's get into our main topic and we'll be using uh, factorials within this topic today. So what is a combination? It's an arrangement or lineup where the order does not matter. And you'll see that a permutation is an arrangement or lineup where the order does matter. So that's the main difference. So if it's just a random combination or arrangement, then it's a combination. But if the order does matter, then you need to use a permutation. And we'll do examples of both. So first we're going to focus on combinations. And combinations we use when we are talking about groups or teams or making piles or making random selections. And then permutations are when we do ordered lists or if we have committees or councils, if you have competition results, so if you have first, second, and third place, things like that. So again, combinations, the order does not matter. This is the formula that we're going to be using uh, in order to find out our combinations, but just like with factorials, there is a way to do this using a graphing calculator. So we'll be doing both methods. So with this one, it looks very complicated, but it's fairly simple once you get the hang of it. So what this is saying is we're going to take n factorial and divide it by r factorial times n minus r factorial. And you might be wondering, well, what does n and r stand for? Well, n is going to be our total number of objects available. And r is going to be how many of them we want to use for the arrangement. So let's come up with some scenarios. Let's say I'm going to go to a restaurant and I've got some appetizers, pizza options, and ice cream options. So here we have sample platters, a special two topping pizza for $9.99 and then a special for a three scoop sundae for $4.99. And I have all the options listed below. Let's look at the appetizers. So for my sampler platter, it says I can choose any two. So if I wanted to know how many different sampler platters can we make, I might think, okay, well, I could just write all out write out all of the different combinations. So if I start off with wings, I could say wings with mozzarella sticks, wings with chips and guac, wings with fries, wings with potato skins, and then do the same thing for all the other ones. So starting off with mozzarella sticks, I would do the other combinations starting with them. 
And then again, I would start off with the chips and do all their combinations and the fries and then the potato skins. But then what happens when we have wings with mozzarella sticks or mozzarella sticks with wings? That's technically the same exact combination because we said the order doesn't matter. I don't care if they end up serving me first the wings or the mozzarella sticks first or second. So in that case, we can eliminate the ones where the order is reversed, which you'll notice we can eliminate in this case all of these. So in that case, in the end, we have a total of 10 combinations that we could have with all of these different platters. Now we can do this using the formula. So let's do this using the combination formula. And of course, before you always start these, you want to think about, is this going to be a combination or a permutation situation? In this case, it is a combination because it's just saying choose two. It's not saying it has to have a certain order. So in that case, it's a combination. So we want to think about what's our N and what's our R value. N is the total number of options that you have. So we have five options because we have the wings, nachos, chips and guac, fries, and potato skins. So our N is going to be five. And then R is how many you want to end up picking from those five. And in this case, our sampler platter says we're choosing two. So our R value is two. So I'm gonna pull up that, uh, that formula again. And we want to now just plug everything in. So it ends up looking like this. We have five factorial divided by two factorial times five minus two factorial. Now let's write all of that out. So five factorial becomes five times four times three times two times one. Two factorial is just two times one. And then five minus two, it's in parentheses. So we wanna combine that first. Five minus two is three. So we're doing three factorial, which is three times two times one. And then we can simplify the numerator to be 120. Denominator is two times six, which ends up being 12 in the denominator. And then 120 divided by 12 would give us a final answer of 10, which is the same exact answer that we got before by writing out all of the different combinations. So as you can see, both methods do require a little bit of work, but if we use the graphing calculator, then it becomes much easier and quicker for us to be able to do. So let's go over those steps. So if you want to be able to do this quickly on a graphing calculator, you want to first type in your n number because we're going to write this in the form of your n value, and then the function, and then our r value. So we're gonna type in our n, and then we wanna go back to that math button underneath the alpha button on the left-hand side, and then all the way to the right to PRB for probability, go all the way down to the third option for ncr, that's the combination option, and then you're going to hit enter, and then lastly, it brings it up again, and you want to type in your R value. And then you would just hit enter, and you would get your answer. All right, so let's go back to our menus. So we now have the pizza options. So they have a special for two topping pizzas for $9.99, and they've got some options. They've got pepperoni and bacon, chicken, ham, sausage, olives, and mushrooms. And so now, if we were to do all the combinations, again, writing this all out is a lot of work and then eliminating half of them because half of them are duplicates, then we can see that in total, we get 21 options. So we could do this using the formula. And again, we can do this the long way by writing it all out on our own, or we could end up using the calculator. So again, this is a combination because the order does not matter. Here, our n value is the total number of pizza topping 
uh, options that we have. So we've got pepperoni, bacon, chicken, ham, sausage, olives, and mushrooms, which is a total of seven toppings. So our end value is seven. And the special is for a two topping pizza. So again, this is a little bit of a repeat, but our R value is going to be two. So we're gonna pull up that combination formula and you can either use the formula or use the graphing calculator. And if you do it with the calculator, you would just do seven, choose that function NCR, and then hit two, and then just hit enter. Or if you did it the long way, you would get seven factorial over two factorial times the quantity of seven minus two factorial, which should in the end simplify to 21. Now, let's talk about our ice cream options. So this one says there's a special for a three scoop sundae for $4.99. And we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different options. So that means our N value is going to end up being six. And then our R value, now in this case, this, uh, the special is for a three scoop sundae. So that means our R value is three. That's how many we want to choose from the total amount. So again, we would plug in six in for N, three in for R, and in the end, you should be getting 20 as your answer. Okay, so now let's move on to permutations. So just to review permutations, this is the case where the arrangements do have to have a certain order that you have to follow. And you'll think that this is the exact same formula, but it's not. There's actually one thing missing. Uh, in the denominator for combinations, you also had R factorial. But in this case, it's a little simpler. There's less work for you to do with these. And again, the N and R stand for the same exact thing. So N is your total amount and R is how many you want to be choosing. And so now let's do another example. So we have seven students are competing in a spelling bee. How many ways can they finish in first, second, and third place? So again, you wanna think, is this a combination or a permutation situation? And because this one is talking about placement, first, second, and third place, the order does matter because you wouldn't give someone an award for first place if they were actually in third place. So whatever order they got, that's the award that they get. So that's why this is a permutation. And our N is a total of seven students. And then R well, we want to just look at first, second, and third place. So that's three places in total. So our R value is three. And now let's pull up that formula. So our N is seven, R is three. So you just plug it in seven factorial over seven minus three factorial, which ends up being a total of 210. But just like with combinations, we can do this on a graphing calculator. And it's going to be the exact same steps. So you're going to type in first your N value, click math under the alpha button on the left hand side, go to the right to PRB, go down to number two now, which is NPR, because we want to use the permutation option and then click enter, and then you want to type in your R value. So it's exactly the same, just like combinations, but now you want to just make sure that you're choosing the correct function. All right, so let's talk about Melanie. Melanie is taking four classes this semester. She's taking American History, Algebra II, AP English, and Physics. How many ways can these four classes be arranged on her schedule? So. Is this a combination or a permutation? Well, for the most part, when you see the word arranged, because arrangement has uh, the connotation that it's an order of something, 
that means we're going to be doing a permutation. So our n value is a total of four classes, and she wants to choose four classes. So don't be afraid if your n and r values end up being exactly the same. It is possible. So here, we're going to plug in our fours for both n and r, and you'll notice that I wrote this as 24 over one, but you might think, well, I thought four minus four is zero, so shouldn't zero be in the denominator? But there is actually something that we know of in the math world. Zero factorial is equal to one. So that means we can't have zero in our denominator. So in that case, we're going to write it as a one. So in the end, our answer here is 24 possible combinations or arrangements, I should say. I shouldn't say combinations because it's a permutation. So just remember when you have zero factorial, it actually simplifies to just one. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's talk about uh, this word automobile. So how many different 10 letter arrangements are possible using the letters in the word automobile? So again, combination or permutation, it says arrangement. And for the most part, when we talk about uh, uh, problems with words, they're going to be permutations. So our n value is a total of 10 letters. And you might think, okay, well, I'm gonna use this formula. Nope. When we do the problems like this, where we want to arrange letters in a word, you want to instead use a different method. We're going to take that total n value and we're going to divide it by the factorials of the repeating letters. So as you can see, we have two O's and that's the only letter that ends up repeating within our word here. So we're going to take our total 10 factorial and the O repeats two times. So I'm going to write it as two factorial in my denominator. And that simplifies to a very large number. And you'll notice that with permutations, you tend to get higher numbers than with combinations and that's okay. So this just shows us that we can have 1,814,400 different arrangements using just these 10 letters, okay? Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what if I have multiple letters that repeat? So let's do an example like that. So now we've got a 12 letter word, we've got the word firecracker, and we want to do the same thing. We want to think about how many arrangements we can have. So again, this is going to be a permutation. Our total n value is 12. And again, we are not going to use that formula. Instead, we're going to divide by the factorials of the repeating letters. So we want to check to see which letters repeat. The R ends up repeating three times, the E repeats two times, and the C repeats two times. So we're going to take our total of 12, and it's going to be 12 factorial in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I'm taking each of those letters that repeated. So the R repeated three times, so I'm writing three factorial in the denominator. And then the E uh, repeated two times. So I'm writing two factorial in the denominator. The C repeated two times. So I'm writing two factorial in the denominator. So in the end, you end up getting 1,663,200 as your answer.